Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, just bear with me because there's lag time on my end on the YouTube, um, and this is my first time doing this. It's also my first time personally cooking, so we're making a Cuban picadillo, um, which is a very traditional dish in Cuba. Uh, my boyfriend makes it for me all the time, and I instantly fell in love with it. Um, it's actually a family recipe, and I hope that I do it justice. It's uh, his mother, Vivian. Um, she she is the, the queen of this dish, so, so, you know, I hope that I can only do it as well as she does it. Um, so basically here, we're gonna, I'm just chopping some peppers. We're gonna use some green pepper. Um, all these ingredients you can get right at your local grocery store. Um, it's a fairly easy dish to put together. So I'll just kind of show you some ingredients that we're going to use. Um, green pepper. White onion. This is a very small onion, but it's an onion. Um, garlic. Uh, I suggest using this minced garlic and oil because it's... It just keeps really well, it's easy, it's right in your refrigerator, so that's what we're kind of going for, is a quick, easy, we call this in the kitchen a one-pot pickup. So it's just going to be in one pot. So first we're going to make the picadillo, and then we're going to make some tostones as well. Um, also in the dish, we're going to put olives. Um, these are manzanilla olives. And um, you can get them right at your local bodega uh, or any Latin aisle at your um, at your local supermarket. Um, that's what I love about this dish is everything you can get right at the supermarket. You don't have to go anywhere special for it. Um, adobo. This is like a key ingredient in uh, a lot of the cooking that we do. Maybe Cuban cooking. I don't want to say anything, but it's we use a lot of this um, at home. Um, and then I have some ground beef here. Um, you want to use, uh, you want to use like a higher fat beef, um, cause it's better. It's like this dish is super juicy and delicious. Um, I have, it's about an 80% 20 fat, but usually you want to use something more like 70% beef with, if you can get a 70% fat, usually it's like 70, 50, um, and also for my vegan vegetarian friends out there, I found this Beyond Beef um, plant-based vegan, no soy, no gluten um, ground beef as well, which I think is really cool. It's packaged, even like sealed, like at regular beef. So you can use, you can apply the same ingredients to something vegan. You can even use this one or this Beyond Meat Crumbles as well, which I also like. The The other one I showed you is something new I found today. Um, so, so uh, and then the other ingredient, tomato sauce. So we're gonna get chopping here, and then we're gonna start cooking. I'm gonna get my, start getting my pan hot so we can start um, what we call the sofrito. And that uh, we're kind of layering the flavors. And what's great about this dish is that it's super simple and I love simple cooking because I think maybe that's what makes this dish so special to me is because you can taste all of the flavors in it and it's just like every little morsel. Um, I actually don't really care for olives, but in this dish it's just so good and the flavor that pops out of it. Um, I usually give them to Victor uh, my boyfriend, but um, he's not here today, so I'm gonna have to pick them out and um, just save them for, or give them, give other people leftovers. So we're still cutting peppers. I was hoping to have this done beforehand, but time caught up to me. So I'm cutting, uh, I'm cutting them in. Uh, pretty much like a, it's like a, usually a, a medium, a smaller dice from what I've been told. Sometimes I cut them too big, I guess, uh, when I'm, when I'm helping in the kitchen. Cause again, 
I'm cooking this meal for the first time with you guys. Um, so again, like I said, I, I think it'll come out pretty good, but you know, we'll see. I know there's like a perfect, uh, Victor always says there's a perfect flavor that he's always trying to get that his mother nails every time. And um, so he's not here to taste test, but but uh, I'll be I'll be the judge of that. Anyway, I wanted to also say that um, another thing that's recommended to go in this that I am not going to put in my uh, in my my picadillo today is white wine or sherry. Um, it adds another lovely flavor to it. So um, if you, it's actually recommended. It ha gives it a little bit uh, better flavor. Um, I'm not going to add that in today. But another thing that um, that is that is added into this uh, to add sweetness is raisins, um, and then to add a little bit more starch also is um, potato. So that's something that you can also add in if you like. So things that I'm not putting in today that are recommended: potato, raisins, white wine. Um, we typically don't put the potato and raisins in it, but the white wine is definitely, um, is definitely recommended. I just want to read some of this. Um, I am, I'm making stuff right here. Um, People are telling me to close my window blinds. I uh, love the alternative options. You're welcome. I just thought about it. I have a lot of vegan and vegetarian friends, so um, I'm going to take my... That was my, 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 my mother's uh, suggestion. Carolina, close the window blinds. I think I forgot to even introduce myself. I'm, Car I'm Chef Carolina. Um, I've worked at multiple restaurants all over the city. Um, and... I'm just happy to be here today cooking this dish that's become, again, one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite dishes. And anytime that um, Victor's around, it's the first thing I like. I think I hug him and then I'm like, picadillo? Um, so I'm really happy to be making this dish today with you guys. Um, I've become really interested in Cuban cuisine, just on my own, and Latin cuisine in general. Um, it, it just, it's the flavors, the flavor profile, I mean, it's just, it's, it's really just, it's my favorite kind of food, um, to be honest with you. Um, it's, you know, I make all different kinds of food, and I just love Latin cuisine, and this is definitely... Um, you know, something that you can use, you can do this, uh, with a bunch, you, you can have, you know, a taco party and you can have this as a side dish. It's great as a side dish. It's great family meal. If you want to make a big batch of rice and, um, and, you know, serve it, you know, you can serve it on a plate or you can put it on a big, you know, on a big plate and put it in the middle of the table and just have everybody chow down. Um, so it's really good for every occasion. Um, so also another ingredient that I'm gonna add in here are bay leaves. And I was just reminded by Victor um, that uh, bay leaves are a key uh, ingredient to this dish. Um, I bought these at my local bodega. Uh, you can get them anywhere in the grocery store. Um, they're dried bay leaves. Um, so I'm going to throw about three of them in here. Maybe I'll throw four in. Um, just because I have it. So we want that to cook down. Um, I am going to make a little bit of white rice. Um, so I'm going to use a rice cooker. But you guys can, it's basically just a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you're doing one cup of rice, you do one cup of water in a pot, 
and you want to bring the rice up to a boil and then um, you want to put it down to a simmer and then put a lid on it and it takes about 20 minutes. Same thing in a rice cooker. So I'm going to be over here for a minute or I'm going to be over here getting my rice cooker. So I almost forgot where, where my rice was, but I forgot that we hid it in this little vintage tin here. So this is a Goya brand um, rice and it is uh, extra long grain. So um, this is why it's preferable. It doesn't have to be Goya brand. Uh, you can use brown rice, rice if you prefer. You can use another starch if you like as well. Um, so I'm going to do about, uh, I'll probably do about half a cup. Um, you know, if you have a big family, you can do as much as you want, but I'm going to do about half a cup right now. So I have my rice and my measuring cup right here. do a one-to-one -one ratio with a half a cup of water. And I'll just show you this really quick. This is a little rice cooker. Um, it's great if you have a small space, um, but basically it's awesome because you can just set it and forget it. Um, but you could do that same thing with a pot on the stove. So the rice is cooking. Our sofrito is cooking. I'm gonna add a bit more oil to this so it doesn't burn and it cooks down nicely. Okay. So now we're gonna season the, um, the ground beef. And on the ground beef, I'm going to put, so I'm just gonna put it on a plate, easy. And I have, I've been advised to use a little sasson. Um, again, this is at every grocery store in the Latino or Latin section, um, and also at your local bodega. They come in little packets. Just like this. So I'm going to season it with a little sasson, adobo, um, and then I'm going to use some sea salt and black pepper. You want to get a good amount in there and the adobo does have salt in it as well as the sasson so you want to just be careful about how much you're using and then i'm going to nicely this is about a pound of meat um i got two pounds but again it's just me right now but um you know this is great this is great again for um, for leftovers. You can freeze it, you can make sandwiches with it. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a moment. Change my gloves.
Um, I actually do have uh, Buena Vista Social Club playing right now, but I guess you can't hear it. Um, I didn't want, I can turn it up and you can tell me. I don't know if you can hear that. Tell me if you can hear that. Alright, so it looks like it's about time to... I feel like... Yeah, so in the pot, I don't know if you can see it, basically just have our onions and peppers, bay leaf sizzling in there. I don't know if you can see in the pot. Um, I'll get a better look at it in a second. just want to put that down. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my beef in. And then as this is cooking, though, we're going to start our tostones. to do this because um, a lot of, as we know, a lot of restaurants in the pandemic are just doing takeout or aren't open right now, so it's kind of nice to be able to, to be able to cook at home um, with you guys and share this recipe that I love so much. Um, uh, somebody is recommending that I do some salsa dancing. Um, I'm not going to be doing that today. I mean, I guess I could throw that in um, at the end. So now, let's see if you can see in the pot now, we have the beef, the sofrito, the peppers and the onions, um, and the bay leaf. You can see that. I'm going to let that cook down a little bit, and then we're going to add in our tomato sauce. And with this, you want to add about like three quarters. I guess you can't see because now, now that I'm seeing, I have to like lift the pot up more. It's really hard to show you what's happening in the pot. If you can see, um, but you will see it on the plate afterward. Alright, so now I'm going to put this away. So, um, again guys, I'm using all things that, um, I'm using all things that you can, that are just in my house. Um, I don't really have the best kitchen equipment um, at my house because I don't do a lot of cooking in my house. Typically I'm cooking in my kitchen um, at work. But, so I'm using just regular things that you can get anywhere, you know, like, I think, you know, we got this at Target, and these are just pots and pans that I bought, so this is what I'm going to fry the plantains in this kind of beat up pan. Um, so I got this Goya vegetable oil, um, and... Um, you're going to want a, a, a good amount of oil in there so that you can fry them. We're going to cut them about uh, like an inch or an inch and a half th th uh, thick. And you want to make sure that it's flat on either side so that when you squish it down that it's the perfect consistency. Now again, I will say that the best tostones I've ever had are, um, are from Victor. So... Um, I'm going to try and, and do this justice as well. So I'm actually going to push this back so that, um, I'm 
cutting board back over here. Just kind of giving it a nice color. Um, and now that everything is in there, um, I don't like to add my garlic in too early because I don't want my garlic to burn. So I'm going to add about a, a, say about. I know there's some of you garlic lovers out there, so I'm going to add about like a about a tablespoon of garlic. I'll put a little bit more in there for, for some of you garlic lovers. And it just it just adds the dish so nicely. So we're gonna get that in there and I can see now you can see it's super juicy, all the fats coming out out of the meat. And this is like this is one of my favorite parts. I feel like I eat this dish and I'm like so full and then I go back again for uh, I go back for seconds and then I'm so full and then you'll find me like eating out of the pot um, and sucking down all the juices because it's just so so juicy. So now we have that on low heat. It smells amazing. The garlic's in there. I bought myself a little guayaba juice, so I'm gonna have a little bit of that for myself. Um, now I'm gonna add in these olives. Um, I'm gonna drain them just a little bit. Put in a good amount. Just you want to put in the olives at kind of around this time so that they're just marinating with everything so that the flavor really comes out in it. So put in. This is about a. So there's still a little bit in here. I added in about say maybe like a half a cup of olives. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open up my tomato sauce. And again, you can get this at any grocery store, so everything that we're using, just bell peppers, uh, onion, uh, already, already minced garlic so it's easy for you, and then you can hold on to that for a long time. Um, Um, first you want music and then you want me to lower the music, but that's okay. So I'm getting texts and messages at the same time, but thank you for the help guys. Cause this is again, my first time doing this. So, okay. I have organic tomato sauce. You can use regular tomato sauce, but this has, this is not the chunky one. Uh, it's not diced. It's not whole. It is, um, just the tomato sauce. So I'm not going to do that because I'll probably spill it. So basically, if you can see what I'm doing over here, I'm going to pour in, I'm going to say about a half. I like it tomato-y, but I try to stick to the, stick to the guidelines. And it looks like it's, it's coming out pretty good. I've got to say, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm not going to lie. This is looking a lot like the one that I've had. And, um, 
So I'm gonna, I used half a can of this because I used about one pound of meat. Um, one pound of meat, I used one bell pepper, one onion, um, three, three bay leaves plus a small one. Um, and then we did, I did about a tablespoon of garlic and a half a cup of olives. So, I mean, it smells just like you make it, I'm just gonna say, but I haven't had Mama Vivian's yet, so I'm, I'm excited for that. I must say, I can't wait to taste, you know, maybe the possible difference, but maybe it's exactly the same, and Victor has done, has done you proud, Mom. Um, okay. So, now we're gonna, while this is going, the rice is cooking, we're gonna start the tostone process. Um, so, most of you would think, oh, is she gonna use a, uh, they have tostone presses, they're usually wooden, kind of like a tortilla press. Um, something, something like this to press the tostones down. But no, we use a paper bag, okay? So I have a paper bag here, um, and it absorbs the, it absorbs the oil and it just gives you, I guess it just, it's, it's the magic, it's a magic trick. So instead of using a press, I'm going to use this paper bag. Um, <laughs> uh, so now while this is going, I'm showing you the paper bag, we're going to get the platinos going. Uh, the tostones, I'm going to put a lid on this and I'm going to let it kind of just simmer so that all the flavors are combined. So pot, or pot lid, low, low simmer, let it just kind of get all the juices, all that flavor, let it just sit. All right. More guayaba. So, when you make tostones, you wanna to make sure that your plantains are green. Um, when you're making um, when you're making a savory tostone, so I have my green tostone that I got from again uh, supporting my local bodega. It's actually a Colombian bodega, um, but they have all their goodies there, and it's right down the street from my house. So I'm gonna cut off the top. I don't know, I hope you guys can, can yeah, you can see me. So I'm gonna cut off the top and the bottom and then I like to just make like a little slit down the middle so that I can just peel, peel this back if it'll allow me. I'm gonna get a spoon to help me. So it's not coming off that easy, but we're doing this together. Start opening this plantain up, nice and green. And as we do this, in a moment, I'm gonna get my oil starting to, um, 
my oil is starting to get hot so that I can start the process of this because it, it does take a little while um, because it, it's in two steps. So you want to cut the one and a half piece inch and then you then we're going to smush them and then we're going to fry them again and then we're going to season them. For. I wish you guys could taste this dish and then after this there'll be a, um, a link that'll be um, posted to this with the recipe and the ingredients so that you guys can go to the store and you can make it yourself at home and the video will be on YouTube for, um, for the foreseeable future. And I didn't open that plantain that good, but that's why I got a few of them. So I might try it a little bit of a different way. Hopefully this one opens up a little bit better for me. Um, Cause I don't want to ruin, I don't want to take away from the, the shape of the plantain so that the, the tostones come out the right way. So when we get these going, um, we're going to let them fry, but you don't want to overcook them. Um, uh, you need, you, you want to, you don't want to overcook them because then it will affect the, um, it'll affect the whole process of the cooking and they won't come out right. So we're going to see how I do. I'm only going to make a few just so you guys get the idea so that I'm not spending too much time um, tinkering around with the opening of this plantain since it's not as easy as I was hoping. But the picadillo smells delicious. I'm going to give it a taste test in a minute when I think that the meat is cooked all the way through to see if I need, an, need to add any more seasoning or any more tomato sauce or garlic or anything that I see fit. So we're going to get this oil going so that it's hot. I should have done that a minute ago, but I did not. So I'm going to kind of level these out so that again they're as flat as they can be about this size and again they might not be perfect but we're doing our best to get them around the same size So I have a couple that are smaller, but these all are about around the same size again. So I can see my oil heating up. I might just use the little guys to have the little, sometimes I like the really crispy. I kind of go for like the really crispy tostones. Those are my favorite. Um, 
while we're waiting for this oil to heat up, I do have a third plantain that I'm going to go ahead and open up, and then we're going to do a taste test on. I'm going to check out this. Oh yeah, so it's simmering, it's bubbling, it's delicious. I can already see it. I know I'm doing a great job. I gotta say I'm doing a great job, guys. And um, so. I have the uh, oil, the flame on high for right now for the oil. Um, I have the flame on high for the oil, just so it gets up there, and then I'm gonna turn it down because I don't want the again I don't want the oil to be too hot. So um, I just want to get it up to the right point, um, which is just right below what we call the smoking point. So. You don't want to see your oil smoking. You kind of just want to see it. It almost looks like, kind of like when you put oil in water, it kind of just starts to, you start to see it kind of, um, it almost looks like it's separating. So I'm gonna give the pico dio a stir. Oh, you'd be so proud of me. And then I'm going to give it a little taste here. Really good. I think that's a, the, good, the right amount of tomato sauce. I'm going to add a little bit more adobo. I think one thing I didn't put on the meat to um, to marinate it was garlic powder. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of garlic powder in here because I didn't put it on the meat bef before and it's been recommended to me. So I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna taste it again and then I might just add a little bit of salt to it. I wish I had a taste tester to, to tell me if I'm doing how I'm doing, but I've had this enough times now that I think that I think that's where it's supposed to be. That's really good. I don't want to add too much salt, um, so I'm gonna test one of these smaller pieces of plantain that I have. Um, and kind of just test out my oil and see. So I see it bubbling. Unfortunately, you guys can't see that. Um, I wish I could bring a hot pan of oil over, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that to myself or to this computer. So I'm gonna get these all going, and they're gonna be about half filled with the oil. Um, and then I'm gonna flip it over. So they're not perfectly flat, but I think I can. I think I can do this. I know I can. So that with with the kind of cutting off the excess, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That give me about ten ten tostones with three platanos um, around, depending on the size. Um, depending on the size of the plantain. These were happen to be smaller plantains. So, um, so it, I didn't get that many out, but again, I can see, so my oil starting to get, I can see it starting to get up there. So I want to get it down to a low heat because we don't want these, again, we don't want them to overcook. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm actually wait a second till it browns just a little bit more. And then we will start a brown paper bag. Um, usually we use two of these, um, but I'm gonna, I have one 
So I'm going to kind of probably do something like this. And then basically you want to go with your hand, you want to press down and then go into, into a circular motion so that you're making, it's not just flattening it, you want to go down to a circular motion so you get the right size of the tostone. And then, then when you refry them, they're going to kind of puff up a little bit and they're just so delicious. And they're actually, it's another thing you would be surprised. You would think, oh, these aren't going to heat up that well the next day. But if you, um, you can heat them up again really well the next day as well. So you have a whole, a whole nother meal. Um, and uh, you know, you don't always have to put rice with this again. Like I said, it could just be a nice side dish at a dinner um, with just the beef. Um, or, you, you know, often we pair it with a salad. If we don't want to eat the rice, um, we'll just do a salad with it. If we're just, you know, trying to, through staying at home a lot, trying to eat a little less um, starch. So... So these are getting golden, which is good, but I don't I don't want to undercook them and I don't want to overcook them because if I overcook them, then they're gonna they're gonna burn. And if I undercook them, then um, they're not gonna they're not gonna uh, I'll just for lack of a better term smush right. So we're pretty much almost done here. This is looking great. Again, it's on low. The juices are right. The flavor is all there. We have the nice flavor of tomato, but it's not too, it's not too tomato saucy. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't taste like like a like a beef marinara. It should just kind of have like the hint, like the vinegar from the tomato. Um, So I'm just flipping these around to make sure that I'm getting, we'll do a tester. And then for the seasoning of the tostones, garlic powder, um, you can get this anywhere, um, any local grocery store, any bodega and salt. Um, I will say some people do put sasson um, on their tostones. It's also a really good, um, a really good um, flavor profile for, for tostones. Some people put lime on them. Um, in this recipe, it's just salt and garlic powder. So I want to thank so much for being introduced to this, um, for being introduced to this, uh, to this meal by Victor and, um, and also, you know, his mother giving him the recipe and him always making it for me and always making things, um, that she's made for him, that she's always made for him growing up. Um, so... Um, so one of the books that I was given from Victor for, I think it was Christmas, um, and this is a family, this is in their family that this book, it's Memories of a Cuban Kitchen, and I was given the okay to share this book, and it does have, um, it does have the Picadillo recipe in it, um, right here on page 122 um, and it does again it, it says the, the dry sherry it says, it says dry sherry um, which white wine has been recommended to me um, it also says crushed tomatoes and the tomato sauce I think is better um, you can add a little Worcestershire sauce in it um, maybe like a teaspoon of Tabasco um, we like to put that on afterward just 
you know, you can make it a little spicy if you want. But again, it pretty much has everything in there, except it does have the potatoes and the raisins in there. Um, and also it's, uh, it's so another, um, another great thing to do with it that is um, very traditional for Cubans to do is to put uh, a fried egg on top. Or in the book, it even says one large hard boiled egg finely chopped. Um, it even says a half can of drained, uh, drained sweet peas and one uh, pimiento chopped. So there's different ways you could do this, but this is the way that we that we like to do it. But you have options. So I'm gonna pull the I'm gonna turn my heat off for a moment so that I don't burn these and now we're gonna test these out quickly and we still have our oil going so I'm gonna press and then I'm gonna turn so they seem like they're a little bit overcooked so I'm gonna go ahead before I press them all and just take them all out could just be that I don't have the two paper bags also so it was like sticking a little bit but I'm doing with what I can and that's what that's what this is for is the test for me a test for you and you know if you don't have the two paper bags at home um, a lot of us are using reusable bags so remember if you're gonna do a tostone dish to um, save your paper bags so I'm gonna now so this kind of came out a little bit broken, um, but it still looks good. So I'm gonna leave my, I'm gonna turn my oil back on and basically put it down to low and then I'm gonna refry these in the same oil. And then you just kind of want to remember which one went in first, which is a hard part. So again, I'm down. Whoop not dropping the cutting board, and then turning. I feel like it would be easier if I did it this way. Down. Turning. And they're, you know, pretty good size. That one's a little thick, so I'm going to kind of smoosh it down a little bit more and then I'm going to get a plate with a paper towel so that I can let them dry on that and that's what I'll season it on so I'm just putting it down light smush slightly turning I can kind of feel what size it is too. Um, you don't want to smush them too much because then they'll fall apart. So putting them in there. I'm gonna get my paper plate with um, uh, with paper towels ready so that I'm ready to take these guys out right away. So I have a plate, paper towel, keeping a close eye, kind of flipping these guys. You want them to get nice and golden. I can already feel that they're getting nice and crispy, which again, as I said, I love. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to continue the, the smushing process. And I really love Cuban food. I think it's, it's so delicious. It's, it's all very simple ingredients, but so much thought is put into it. And it's a little bit different than other Latin cuisine. Um, you know, some of the names and things um, and some of the flavor profiles. 
So um, it's been really awesome to kind of learn. I do a lot of Latin cooking myself, and it's been really awesome to learn kind of a different, different, uh, you know, like mojo sauce, um, using that, or um, different seasonings and things to make, um, to make uh, the the Cuban food with. I'm sorry if I'm if I'm. Uh, stuttering it's not because I have a stutter it's because I'm reading people's comments so we're getting there getting nice and golden um, my pan is full right now so um, I'm gonna go ahead and check my rice it looks like it's done And then I like to put, um, I like to put a little bit of, I found that um, I have a, ver a variety of hot sauces to show you guys. Um, and it's just good with like, I like uh, um, Valentina, something with a little, like a little vinegary. Um, but I have, if you like really, really hot, I have a Yucateca hot sauce that's really good. Um, uh, um, Tabasco is really good, uh, but I have, I mean, I, I'm a hot sauce collector, and so I can name off a bunch of them. So when these come out, this is like the perfect time that you want to get the, you want to get the seasoning on them because it sticks to it. So we're going to add our salt on both sides as they come out, and then I'm going to add my garlic powder. Kind of flipping. So good. I am, I am jealous for you guys because this is like amazing. It's so homey. It makes me feel like I'm at home. It's one of my favorite meals ever. Um, and I'm just, you know, I am a professional chef, but I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself, you know, because this is something, again, that I've wanted to make myself and I just, I wanted to share it with people because it's just been such a delight to have um, here at home. So while those are kind of cooking, I'm just going to smush down these other three so I can get them going and then we can start plating. All right, so again, smush down, just a slight press. And now I can kind of see like where where my tostones are at. Smush, press. Oh, that one's good. That one is good. And then smush, press. It's a little thick, so I'm just gonna kind of. All right. So that made a good amount of tostones for three small plantains. Um, so I'm going to get back to seasoning these guys. And then my other guys are coming out. So it's kind of like a, a you got to be fast with this process because you want to get them out in the right time so they don't burn. And then you want to get them seasoned in the right time so the seasoning sticks. Um, cause when they come out, just like if you use a fryer, um, you want to season something that comes out of the fryer right away because the seasoning will stick to it automatically. Whereas if you let it kind of sit and dry out, the seasoning is just going to sit on top of it. So I'm giving these a good amount of salt. And again, these can sometimes be salty. So that's why you want to be careful about making sure your picadillo is not that salty. So we have, it's a pretty starchy dish as it is so that's why you know like the, the potato I'm sure is delicious in it maybe if you're making it by yourself but by itself I think it would be a great thing to add in um and um but and with the raisins as a side dish I think it would be a great thing to add in but I think with what we have going on here I'm gonna just turn this off because this is done so that was quick. I mean, I think if I wasn't talking and 
you know, and showing you guys stuff that this, not only is this dish, it can be done very quickly. It can feed, uh, it can feed just yourself. You can have tons of leftovers. Um, it can feed a family. Um, you know, it's great for parties and it's freezable. So you can just, you know, you can just freeze it, pull it out of the freezer, it, you know, pop it in the microwave or, um, you know, and then, or put it back in the, in the pan. Um, I usually, if it's in the fridge, I usually, I eat it like I'll, I'll eat it right there. So you guys can get a good look at this. You can see the juices kind of running down. You can see the olives in there. You can see everything. It smells so, so good. You can see the steam coming off of it. I just want to put this whole bite in my mouth, but I know that it's piping hot and I will likely regret it. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit now that I have a little bit more control of my heat with my tostones just so they're done. But we can start cleaning up here pretty soon. And I have a couple plates here, but I might just put everything on one plate and then I, I recommend I love putting, um, so I got this from the local bodega. This is like a real deal, like avocado you would find off of the tree. It's actually from Miami. Um, so we're going to look at this and see if it's ready. It's a little bit hard. If not, um, I just got these, um, I just got these, uh, regular avocados from California that I know are nice and soft so um you know we might just use this but it just it's nice and creamy and it just goes with the dish so well and then i usually put a little bit of adobo back on that too it's like i think now i put adobo on like literally everything uh, it's one of my staple it's one of my staple so uh seasonings at this point Okay, so while those finish, I'm going to put these over here on my table, kind of make some space, have another sip of my guayaba juice, Hugo. I said it, I did. And I'm a little reluctant to dig into this avocado because it is hard and I don't want to, I don't want to lose it. So I am going to use this California avocado and save my other avocado for another time. Because those are my favorite ones. I used to live on Maui, and I remember picking avocados off of the tree, and those were the kind of the jungle avocados, as we call them. Um, they don't look like, usually like these conventional avocados. So. These actually look like they're about to be ready to come out. So we're going to turn off the heat for our tostones. And then also you can save this oil. Um, it, it takes a lot of oil for the tostones. So you can see, like, look how awesome and, like, just in color that is. It's just perfectly crispy. It's It, it looks great. Um, so they puff up with the natural starches in them. Um, and the double cook, they puff up really, really, really nicely. So again, I'm going to salt. And I do have enough uh, food here for probably like six people. So if anyone wants to come join me. Um... I'm likely going to be giving leftovers away. So again, so now we have this beautiful plate of tostones that I pretty much nailed. And 
they look awesome and I can't wait to dive into these especially when they're nice and they're juicy and they're all delicious and oh they're just they're so good I could eat these I'm always like oh green <laughs> every time I see a plantain I'm like green plantains tostones and so um I will put this a little higher trying not to drop it um and hope that you can see it um I'm trying to see if there's lag time um so I see now everyone's telling me you can't see them but you can now because I can see it all right I see that raise them up I'm raising them up so that's the tostones all right so now I'm just gonna cut this avocado into little slices and then we're gonna go to plate our dish Um, I just wanted to also give a shout out to, um, restaurants in Boston and restaurants actually all over the world that this, uh, that this pandemic has affected and to please support, you know, restaurants are slowly opening, um, in Boston and, 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 in other states, um, in the, in the country and, um, so if you can, if you feel comfortable going out and supporting takeout, there's a lot of patios that are opening now that the governor is letting us open in, um, in Boston and, you know, go out support. It's been beautiful outside. Um, go out support, uh, support the local restaurants if you can. I know it's become really natural to cook at home, but again, it's really nice out and, you know, the restaurants need help right now. And, you know, it's the, it's people like myself that are going to be able to get back to work if we have more, um, more guests, um, coming to our restaurants. So if you can support, please do. Um, if, you know, also supporting like local local bodegas local markets um i want to give a shout out to uh you know some of my uh, other um you know some other restaurants in boston um to be asked to do this uh there's such a great lineup for for um for this program of chefs so i was super excited to be asked to do this um it's an honor to be um, to be able to be part of the, the group that um, has been doing the Boston Supper the Boston Public Library Supper Club, um, and it's just something it's great for chefs that are you know we work we work a lot so not used to being at home and trying to keep ourselves busy so to be able to to cook a nice meal in my kitchen um, and being able to do it with you guys. And then, you know, if you guys can go out, you can get a meal like this or cook it at home. But, you know, just trying to support, everyone's trying to support local businesses right now. This um, turban that I'm wearing right now is from parodies.com. It's great for every kind of wear. It's great. It's uh, Wix Moisture. Um, it's my best friend uh, and sister's um, shop that uh, has a multi, uh, multi, um, a transformative clothing, which she's making masks, um, out of this beautiful fabric. And she's also making these turbans that are great for me in the kitchen because they wick moisture and they just keep my hair out of my face. So I wanted to make sure to wear those. So I have my avocado cut here. The picadillo smells amazing. Tostones are ready. Clean up, clean off everything a little bit. And now, um, so you don't want to get the bay leaves into the dish when you're plating. So just you 
you know, you can keep them in there for when you're, um, when you're holding, because usually this makes a lot, especially if I just made two pounds, I probably would have been like, here's enough uh, picadillo for the, the whole town. Um, but actually what I'm going to do is my rice first. So I'm going to go over there to my rice cooker. So pardon me. So I'm going to hold, hold this high. So I have about that much rice. That's a lot of rice. I usually don't need that much rice, but for plating purposes, I'm going to put that much rice on there. And then we're going to go ahead watching the bay leaves again. And you can see it's like there's, I don't know if you can see, but you want, I like to get all those juices in there. I wish I had a bigger, I should probably have grabbed a bigger spoon. Um, but because the juices kind of absorb into the rice or even when you're putting it on a salad it's like the juices absorb into the salad so if you can see here without me spilling everything you have the rice the beautiful picadillo and then couple slices of avocado. I'm trying to put it high. And the tostones. Let's see if I put this down here. If you guys can see. This beautiful meal that we just created. So we have the tostones, the picadillo, the white rice, a little avocado. Let's see if I lift it up. I'm trying to get the right angle here so you guys can can see everything without. And then I'm going to, it's really hard to get a good angle, just put a little bit of adobo on my avocado. And then let's see if we can get a good shot of, oh yeah, I don't know how to get the camera right. Tell me if you guys can, tell me if you guys can see it, if you can see it, all the different components. Trying to figure out how to get the camera in the right, the right area here. So I'm <laughs> just trying different angles at this point. Um, I'll just give it a give it a spin and hope that you can see everything that we have going on here. Backing up slightly. Good call. Yeah, if you know any good camera guys um, that can help me next time, <laughs> call me. Oh yeah, when I backed up, there it is. You guys can see it now. So you see the tostones, the picadillo, the arroz, a avocate, and there we have, we have our Cuban picadillo with uh, tostones with garlic powder and a little avocado for a side. And I'm going to put the camera back up so you can see me.
and that's that, guys. Um, I hope that you all enjoyed the episode. Um, this is an amazing dish. It's really easy to make at home. Um, and I highly recommend it. Again, I want to thank... Um, I want to thank uh, the Alvarez family for sharing this for sharing this dish with me, and Victor for making it for me so many times. Um, and every time I see a green plantain, wanting to a stone ace because they're the best I've ever had. Um, for again the um, for the memories of a Cuban kitchen, um, this has amazing recipes in it. Um, shout out again to all my local restaurants and restaurants around Boston um, that are that are hanging in there. And also um, Buena Empanada just opened up there in Bow Market. They have great empanadas. Um, my One of my good friends, Melissa Stefanini, we call her Nini. Um, if you want a good empanada, go see her. Um, and a lot of awesome other restaurants that are opening up, guys. And I hope to see you all soon. And I hope that you like the video. And, um, and, uh, sh there shortly will be a recipe that, uh, um, there will shortly be a recipe, uh, and a grocery list so that you guys can, um, go out and, and purchase everything and make it at home. And hopefully this was a good tutorial about, um, you know, how to make a nice Cuban meal, just something different than you might be used to um, making regularly. And again, it's just, it's so tasty. I'm gonna go ahead and mow down manja manja on this delicious uh, dinner. And, um, and again, uh, thank you all for being here. And um, I love you guys and we'll see y'all soon. Thank you. Buenos noches.